In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what an external heading sensor with compass does for you. So you can make a decision on whether or not it's worth the extra money to spend on it or whether or not you should just use a GPS antenna that's built into the graph you either already have or you're getting ready to purchase. So I have a Lowrance graph and I have my point wind antenna mounted on the back of my pontoon boat and it's about three feet away from my transducer, my three-in-one transducer on the back of my boat. Up at the console, I've got a NEMA network that is switched to this switch to power it on. And my point one antenna is hooked up to my HDS7 graph. And my HDS12 is just working off the internal GPS. Now both have internal. You have to go into the settings if you have a point one antenna to tell the graph whether or not it should pick up the point one. So I'm going to go by the buoy. And since I have both of these graphs connected with an ethernet cable, when I set a waypoint on either graph, the exact waypoint will show up on both. So I'm moving towards the buoy and I'm about to pass it on my starboard side. And soon as I get in line with the console, since I'm saving it to this one here, so it'll be exact to the position, just a couple of feet off to the right, but directly in line with it. I'll go ahead right now and I'll set a waypoint. It says, do I want to set it here? I'm going to go in, I'm going to choose, uh, let's go with that big blue marker right there, icon. And yes, I want to save. And then now it's saved this waypoint right here. Now I have another waypoint back over here. It's a submerged bridge and you can see that it's on both of them. But what I want you to see is right now, I'm going by the buoy, and it says the buoy is directly behind us on both graphs. But now I'm gonna turn around, and I'm gonna go back like I'm fishing it. So this 73 marker waypoint, let's just say that it's a brush pile and not a buoy. Now I've got the buoy visual on top of the water so you can see it clearly kind of what's going on with when we set it but we're still we're moving and and both are the point one antenna is in this direction and the buoy is now to my left and the buoy is now to my left on this one so it right now they're both saying the same thing i can i know exactly where the buoy is or again this could be a submerged brush pile so i'm going to turn like i'm going to make a cast right off the front of the boat straight towards the buoy. This one is pointing in this direction, this one is pointing in this direction, but now I'm gonna back the boat up. I'm gonna back straight up off of the buoy. The one with the point one antenna, since I'm moving straight back, is saying that the buoy is directly in front of the boat. The other one here is saying the buoy is behind the boat. And all I'm doing is backing straight up. The reason for that is the GPS is just dropping coordinates and I am moving in this direction, but I'm moving backwards. So what this does is allows you to see the relationship of your boat to the structure that you're throwing at, or in my case, the buoy that I'm trying to cast to. At the end of the video, what I'll do is put up a video where I went crappy fishing on Lake Hartwell and I used a point one antenna to precision cast on those crappy. If you're considering getting a heading sensor for your boat, Lowrance, Humminbird, Garmin, all the manufacturers make them, the heading sensor is gonna have an internal compass and you have to be careful where you place it on the boat. If there's any magnetic interference, then you're gonna have, you're gonna have issues with it orienting to the way that you're supposed to be faced on the boat. But now that I'm just sitting in front of the buoy, and you can see the buoy, you can see the range rings right here. And those range rings are 100 feet. So it's 100 feet off of my the front of my boat. And this one is spinning around. Like I'm not, not really moving anywhere. I'm drifting a little bit, but it's saying that the buoy marker 73 is back to my back left of the boat. 
So if you do not have a point one antenna, what you're forced to do is zoom out what I've done in the past before I ended up buying one of these things is go out far enough to kind of see what's around you. And in this case, you can see island and island. But what you have to do is zoom out and kind of see what relationship you are to the structure. And that's difficult to do. Okay, one other thing that I wanted to show you. Point one antenna. And this one is saying HDS-12, uh, this device. So it's using the internal antenna. Here are my satellites that I'm picking up. The GPS satellites. I'm in the X. I'm in the X on both. They're both on right now. Look at the amount of signal I have on the point one antenna versus coming off the head unit. The blue lines show you how strong the signal is. So this one's 10 feet and this one's 21.3 feet. Just shows how much more accurate the point one antenna is right now. So that's one thing that you can do. So how do you get to this screen? go to your settings when you go to settings go to system and then satellites so there you go i mean there's there's proof in the seeing the two side by side with a point one at the back of the boat and with this one on the console now one thing that is affecting this unit is i'm under my bimini top on my pontoon boat where this one the point one antenna is out in the open on the back of the boat, but they're still reaching the same satellites and they're, they're even, you know, labeled out here on the bottom, you know, which ones you're actually receiving the signal off of. So all it's doing is triangulating the signal. Guys, I hope this helped. If it does, please give me that thumbs up and please consider subscribing. It would really help me out. I appreciate you. God bless. Have a good one.